Yo, Adam Saxon with Guy in a Cube. Another week, another roundup. We got a new roadmap update for Power BI and really the whole Power Platform. And we've got some awesome community posts as well. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. And with that, let's dig in. Laura Graham Brown's got a blog post looking at the new personalized visual feature inside of Power BI. And this is a really interesting and cool feature of Power BI that lets end users customize visuals to what they want to see without editing or changing the underlying report. Laura walks through a couple examples of this and shows you how to actually walk, set this up in your report as an author, and then also allow end users to use this once the report's been published. She's also got a YouTube video as well that walks you through how to do this so that you can visually see it as she's doing it. So I'm curious from everyone watching this, like what is your experience with personalized visuals? Have you used it? Do you like it? Let me know in the comments below. I want to know. Cy Whiteley from Advancing Analytics has got a video looking at Power BI integration with Azure Synapse Analytics. He's been doing a lot of videos related to Synapse Analytics, and also he and his buddy Terry have been doing videos on Databricks as well. And so it was interesting just to see him walk through how to use Synapse Analytics and what that actual Power BI integration is at this point in the game. So if you're curious about the Power BI integration with Synapse Analytics, or you're just curious about Synapse Analytics and or Databricks, check out his YouTube channel. Links down in the description below, along with links to all the items in this week's roundup, including some bonus items. Go check it out. Megan Lagoria has got a blog post looking at how to refresh a Power BI data set using a REST API inside of Azure Data Factory. She calls out that she's building on a blog post that Dave Rooster had published a while back, and she is taking it to the next level with not only refreshing the data set, but also getting the status of that refresh as well. If you're not familiar with what Azure Data Factory or ADF is, this is really just the enterprise level of ETL type tools. So the ability to move data from one thing to another. So think Power Query really grown up. Well, some would argue Power Query is already grown up. If you're looking for some of that enterprise type ETL processes to move your data around, and you want to trigger a Power BI refresh at the end of your load of your data, this is a great way to do it. And Megan and Dave have got you covered. We had an update that was actually interesting. There were two items inside of it. The first one is that now apps have their own contact list. So before we had a contact list for the workspace, but now the apps have a contact list as well. It could be either the person that published the app, or you could go off of the contact list for the workspace or just define your own. And so if you want to have a way for people to discover who actually owns the app or who to contact for the app, this is a great way to do it. The other item was an update to the contributor role in a workspace. And what this is, is allows you to delegate as an admin of the workspace, the ability for contributors to be able to update a published app. So it's not letting them publish the app, but once the app is published, a contributor could potentially go update it. It's off by default, but this is a way that you can maybe you know, let a contributor do that without having all the full rights of what a member can do. And both of those items are in production today, so you can take full advantage of it. If you're not familiar with it, there's a thing out there called release plans and release waves. And really, this is the roadmap for both Dynamics and the Power Platform, which includes Power BI. And we got the release plan 2020 wave two not too long ago. And so this is going to cover the time frame from October 2020 to March 2021 and includes a bunch of items that are planned in that time range. You could also look at wave one, which goes until October 2020 as well. So, but these are all kind of the big ticket things that are being worked on for Power BI. These are the things that are planned. And so you could have a look at that and see what's coming down the line. And if there's something that's missing from that, that you're really interested in, be sure to go out to ideas.powerbi.com and vote those items up to make sure that to help the, the product team prioritize those items to get those out in the future. Two items that stood out to me in this is the lasso select for data points and small multiples coming for Power BI. A lot of people have been asking for that. So check out the link down in the description below and go have a look at the new release wave and let me know what you think. All right, I want to hand this off to you. What was your favorite item this last week? Let me know in the comments below. I want to hear it. 
If you like this video, be sure to hit that big thumbs up button, smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome and we'll see you in the next video.